कैन यू डू योर नेक्स्ट वीडियो ऑन ग्रेविटेशनल लेंसिंग ऑल राइट लेट्स डू इट यू सी ग्रेविटेशनल लेंसिंग इज अ फेनोमेना दैट हैज टू डू विथ द बेंडिंग ऑफ लाइट इन द प्रेजेंस ऑफ heavy objects like stars galaxies and galactic clusters and it is accurately described by the theory known as general theory of relativity now if you have been following my channel in the last couple of weeks i have been doing a mini series on special theory of relativity and as it turns out both the special theory of relativity and the general theory of relativity was given by albert einstein almost 100 years ago In 1905 Albert Einstein who was then a 26 year old young man working in a patent office published a couple of papers one of them led to the birth of special theory of relativity which is called special because it deals with inertial frames of reference 10 years later in 1915 he completed his work on the general theory of relativity and it's called general because it includes accelerating frames of reference and more importantly the effects of massive objects on the geometry of space and time one of the consequences of general theory of relativity is that heavy objects distort the geometry of space time around it in such a manner that nearby objects end up traveling in curved paths now this is kind of like uh, if let's suppose i am walking in a straight line if i try walking in a straight line and i keep walking for a very long period of time i will end up completing a circle around the surface of the earth so even if i am walking in a straight line because the surface beneath my feet curves as a result of the curvature of the earth i end up traveling in a curved path so the trajectory is as a result of gravitational force is in fact a result of the curvature of space time in the presence of massive objects this leads us to what is known as the bending of light you see light in vacuum travels in straight lines at the speed of light but in the presence of massive objects even a light experiences bending due to the curved geometry of space time this creates what we can call a optical illusion if a light ray reaches the earth from far away and experiences bending in the presence of the sun then the apparent position of the distant star from which the light ray came would be shifted from its actual position this is one of the earliest predictions made by general theory of relativity that if light ray from a distant star reaches the earth uh near the vicinity of the sun then its apparent position is going to shift because of the bending of the light ray that takes place in fact uh it was experimentally verified by uh, arthur eddington and his colleagues in 1919 when they looked at the positions of various stars during a solar eclipse and by comparing the position of the stars during the solar eclipse and the positions of the same stars at night time when the sun was absent arthur eddington and his colleagues were able to find out a deflection which was exactly predicted by the general theory of relativity this gave one of the uh, first experimental demonstrations of uh, the validity of the general theory of relativity in fact in the coming decades people started hypothesizing that if the object which is causing the bending of light is massive enough for example instead of stars we talk about galaxies uh then that massive object may act like a lens in fact in 1936 albert einstein proposed the idea of lens like objects or extremely massive objects that cause bending of light in such a manner that the massive object in fact acts like a lens this brings us to gravitational lenses see gravitational lenses are in fact massive objects like galaxies or clusters of galaxies which bends the light coming from distant objects like stars or quasars to the earth and because of this bending we see some very very interesting images of distant cosmic objects sometimes we end up seeing multiple images of the same object sometimes we end up seeing the distorted images 
uh, of distant galaxies or stars. However, we need to keep in mind that gravitational lens is a little bit different from optical lenses. You see, when we talk about optical lenses, when you go slightly far away from the center of the lens, the amount of bending that the light experiences is more and more. As a result of this, when an object is looked at through the optical lens, that optical lens creates a fixed focal length for all the light rays coming from that particular source. On the other hand, if you look at galactic clusters, then as you move away from the center of the mass, then the amount of bending that takes place is lesser and lesser. Because of this reason, the light coming from some faraway object behind that galactic cluster does not fall onto one focal point. So gravitational lenses are slightly different from optical lenses in the sense that they do not have one fixed focal point. In fact, gravitational lenses may be thought of as having a focal line. This particular difference along with the fact that the gravitational lens is in fact some galactic cluster which creates a blind spot leads to some very very interesting images. So for example here in this particular animation you can see that some sort of a galaxy is acting as a gravitational lens and far away galaxy is traveling behind it. So as it travels behind it you end up seeing the smearing or the distortion of the light coming from the far away object creating something like this. So depending upon the nature of the galactic clusters and whether or not they are on the line of sight of the distant object that we are looking at, we can see different kinds of images. So if the gravitational lens is somewhat symmetric and lying on the line of sight connecting the observer to the source, then the amount of distortion happens uniformly leading to images that looks like some sort of a circle. This is in fact known as the Einstein ring. Einstein rings are quite common when there is a uniform distribution of the gravitational lens and the distant object which we are looking at is on the line of sight connected by this particular gravitational lens. Here are a few more images of various kinds of Einstein rings which are observed around gravitational lenses. When the gravitational lens, which essentially is in fact a collection of galactic clusters, is non-uniform or elongated and does not necessarily lie on the line of sight joining the distant quasar or the star that we are observing from the Earth, in that kind of a situation, instead of some kind of a ring or an arc, we end up seeing multiple images at different points. As you can see in this particular image, these four objects are in fact the very one particular object which is a distant quasar and we end up seeing multiple images of the same quasar. So these are four different points which are images of the same quasar. This is known as the Einstein cross. So essentially gravitational masses twist and bend light in such a manner that we end up seeing this cosmic mirage of different kinds of images, distorted images, elongated arcs, rings of various quasars or stars lying far away. And this phenomena is known as the phenomena of gravitational lensing. Now what are the applications of gravitational lensing? Well, because the amount of bending of light that takes place depends upon the nearby mass of the object. Uh, one use of the gravitational lensing technique is to determine the masses of various galaxies. So the amount of deflection can be calculated from the general theory of relativity, uh, which is actually the result of the mass present in that nearby vicinity. So one application is to determine the mass of various galactic clusters which are acting as gravitational lenses. Another is of course the mapping of the night sky. So whenever telescopes look into the night sky, they see billions and billions of galaxies and stars scattered around. However, many of these images are shifted or distorted or many of these images are in fact the multiple images of the same object. Having an idea of gravitational lensing can help astronomers map the actual positions of various stars and galaxies in the night sky. Another advantage of gravitational lensing technique is known as microlensing. So this is what happens when uh, some kind of an exoplanet, something that does not emit much light, 
uh, passes in the background of a star. So what happens is that if the exoplanet is uh, sufficiently massive enough, it may lead to the deflection of light coming from the background star or quasar or galaxy. And what happens is the light coming from the background galaxies or stars brightens up the background thereby making it easier to detect exoplanets which usually do not emit light. So microlensing is a technique of detecting faraway exoplanets which does not emit light but in the background of various galaxies can be seen or can be detected because the gravitational lensing technique not only bends the light but in certain situations brightens up the object behind this kind of a lens. Finally, uh, one of the very important uses of this particular technique is to map the presence of dark matter. You see dark matter is a very unique mysterious kind of matter present in our universe. In fact it occupies around 80 to 85 percent of the matter in our universe but does not interact with light. We cannot see them via telescopes. The only way we can detect them is because of gravity. So scientists can map out the presence of dark matter in various galaxies and galactic clusters by looking at the amount of deflection of light radiation that is taking place. So having this kind of a topographical map which uh, consists of hills and valleys gives us an idea about the distribution of matter in the night sky. So as you can see gravitational lensing is a very interesting phenomena and it has a lot of applications in modern uh, astronomy and astrophysics. So, so that is all. I hope you learned something from today's discussion. Uh, that's it. Thank you very much. I'll see you in the next video.